Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss compound interest and the use of single payment formulas. In this video, we will define the topic of compound interest and the use of single payment formulas, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of compound interest and single payment formulas falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook 8th edition, 2nd revision. Money today does not have the same value as money at some point in the future. Perhaps over a short period of time, we can add up the various sums of money and accept the net results. However, this does not work over a longer period of time. For this reason, we need tools, tables, formulas, and various economic factors to reference when, is, when it is necessary to compare two complex alternatives. A series of these formulas are known as the single payment formulas. These formulas take some value in time and converts it to an equivalent value at some other point in time. The economic factor that affects this value is interest, or over a period greater than one year, compound interest. Compound interest refers to the interest for a period calculated off the principal and interest from a previous period. All engineering economic analysis is based off compound interest, and for that reason, as we will see, special tables with various pre-calculated conversion factors have been established for our use. So let's run through the general workflow. The goal of any single payment problem is to determine what monetary value would be equivalent at some other point in time based off specific economic factors. The first step to solving a single payment problem is to determine the various economic drivers of importance. These fa factors include number one, the value to be analyzed and whether that value is a future worth or a present worth. Number two, the equivalent value to be determined, a future worth or a present worth. Number three, the interest rate. And number four, the number of periods. Once the variables are defined, we can solve these problems in one of two ways. Either by using the single payment formulas found in the table on page 114 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision, or by using the functional notation version of these equations and referencing the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. So let's run through an example. A business owner puts $12,000 into a bank account with a 6% annual interest rate. What would the equivalent payment be after three years? The solution. The goal is to determine what payment would be equivalent three years down the road had the business owner invested $12,000 now at a 6% interest annual interest rate. Like we established earlier, this can be determined in one of two ways. Either by using the single payment compound amount formula found in the table on page 114 of the NCES Supplied Reference Handbook, or by using that formula written in functional notation and referencing the compound interest tables starting on page 116. In this video, we will solve it using the single payment compound amount formula. There are two single payment formulas, each unique depending on whether we are converting a present value into a future value or a future value into a present value. In this problem, we are converting a present value into a future value. So we use a single payment compound amount formula, which is F 
is equal to p times 1 plus i raised to the n, where f is a fut future sum of money taking into account some present value p, sum at an interest rate i over some number of periods n. p is a present sum of money. i is the effective interest rate for the specific interest <coughs> i is the effective interest rate for a specific interest period and it's important to note that the problem will give this interest rate as a percentage but when we are working it into these formulas it must be represented as a decimal value and finally n is the number of interest periods it can be any length but most commonly will be one year in this problem, we are given the following. First, f. This is our unknown value we are solving for. It's a future value. We're given p, which is our initial value of $12,000. We're given an interest rate of 6% or 0 0.06. And our period is three years. Plugging these values into the single payment compound amount formula, we get f is equal to 12,000 times 1 plus 0 0.06 raised to the third, and that's equal to $14,292. So the equivalent of $12,000 invested now at 6% annual interest in three years is $14,292. Now there are a few common ways individuals can trip up on a problem like this. It's probably the most prominent one is when using these single payment formulas, external pressures of time may lead us to incorrectly inputting the interest rate into our calculators as 6, rather than the decimal representation of this percentage, which is 0 0.06. This would obviously dramatically overstate the interest made on the investment. It would look really nice to us, but it, it just wouldn't be reality. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Boot Camp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.